Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I want to share with you a new online class that Stephanie Bernard at the Stamps of Life is going to be having. And it's called Drinks with Friends. And in that online class, you get this clear stamp set, which includes these three drink stamps. And there's a larger crab, a smaller, a two smaller crabs. So there's three crabs in total and then there's a sentiment that says let's get together and you also will get the matching dies with this stamp set. In addition you will also get the seashell folded it makes an A2 size card shaped like a seashell and you will also get a stencil and the stencil is a sun and wave stencil so this is what the packaging looks like and this is what the actual stencil looks like so you can see on the top of the stencil you can do a really fun sun pattern and then at the bottom is a wave so if you wanted to create some ocean scenes you can use the bottom of that stencil to create the waves. So I created three cards using the contents of the class kit. So here's one of the cards where I brought in the pina colada drink and one of the crabs and the sentiment. I also brought in the tropical to stamp stamp set where I got that tropical flower and the leaves and I thought that was a perfect addition to this card. For my second card, I used the seashell fold it and I brought in two of the other drinks and added that there to the front of the card. I also brought in some sand that I had. It wasn't actual beach sand, but it was sand glitter that I actually had on my stash and added it to the front of that seashell. I thought it made a nice um, accent to that card. And for my third card, I used the seashell on the front of an A2 size card. I also brought in the mermaid to stamp, as well as the crab from the class kit, as well as a seashell from the seashells to stamp set, added a border and some more sand to create this fun card. Now I do want you to keep in mind that these cards are my own designs and I do not know what Stephanie has in store for the class. I'm sure that it's going to be something awesome because she always comes up with something awesome for the class. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made these cards. So if you want to see how I made these cards, please stay tuned. If not, there will be a link down in the description box for more information on the class. So you can head on down there and take a look at the Stamps of Life website to see the dates and times of the class. Now I do want to mention that the class will be held in May. That's May of 2021. So if you're watching this at a later date and the class kit contents are limited. So once they're gone, they are gone for good. Um, so if you really like what you see in this kit, make sure you'll want to make sure that you purchase it. A lot of her kits have been selling out rather quickly. So when she does release an online class, they usually sell out pretty quick. So if you really like the contents, make sure you click on down in the description box and go ahead and go over to the Stamps of Life website and purchase the kit. If you are a Stamps of Life Club member, you will get your discount on the class kit contents. So for those of you who've never taken an online class with the Stamps of Life before, just want to give you some background information. She will put out a supply list ahead of time. So you will be able to look on the website and there's, I believe it's a PDF file that she'll be able to give you the, the supply list of everything that you'll need and need to have die cut prior to the class and she will also provide a private link to the online class. It will be held on YouTube at a certain day and time. The day will be sometime in May. I'm not sure at the time of filming this video the exact date but that information once this video is posted will be in the description box. You'll be able to see a link there which will take you to the Stamps of Life website which will give you more information as far as day and time. So that private link will be a link to her online class that she'll be hosting on YouTube and you'll be able to follow along with her as you create the projects that she's going to put out for that class. Now if you happen to not be available on the day and time that she is having the class, it will be recorded so you can always have that link and go back and watch it as many times as you need to to create those projects. 
So just real quick before I finish all of this coloring, I did want to mention that I am using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and doing some water coloring. I will have all of the colors listed down below in the description. Basically I'm picking like a dark and a light color and then blending it out with the blender. So the Zig Clean Color pens they actually come with a blender pen you can use water if you wanted to to blend out those colors but I chose in my cards to actually just lay the marker down and then use the blender pen that I purchased separately with my zig markers to blend out that color to create a watercolored look and when I color with my watercolor or my zig markers I do use the Bristol smooth cardstock to do my coloring. And after I colored my images, I went ahead and used the dies and cut them all out. So for card one, I'm making a background and I have my Bristol Smooth cardstock that I have cut down to four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I'm laying down my Spectrum Noir glitter pen in the color Moonlight. It's this really pretty yellow color and I'm just laying it down towards the top of that cardstock basically just brushing it down with the actual pen and then I come in and take an actual paintbrush and I do add some water to my glass mat, pick up that water with the paintbrush and then smooth out that marker onto the cardstock. Before I go into the next color, I always wanna make sure that I clean my paintbrush off so that I don't have any of the yellow color on that paintbrush before I move into the next color. So the next color I add is the topaz, which is a really pretty blue color. So my goal here is to create a beautiful scene with basically sunlight and then going into the ocean scene. So I have the topaz color and then I take my paintbrush and kind of just smooth that out. I also added some aquamarine and moonstone. Moonstone is that lightest color there towards the bottom. and you can see me just using the tip of that paintbrush just to kind of get a straight line there across the top. I don't want to blend the yellow and the blue together. I just kind of want to create a straight, straight line to create the um, line where the sky and the ocean meet. So then I just make it a little bit darker, come back in with that moon, the moonlight color, the yellow color, add a little bit of the Spectrum Noir glitter pen at the top, and then come in with my paintbrush with some water. Here I took a piece of ginger snap cardstock, I cut it out of a border die, and I'm just using my Copic markers to create some texture to this um, border. This is going to represent my sand. So I start out with my darkest color, which is my E49, and just add the tip of that marker. So you can see how I'm holding my marker, just wanting to add the very tip, just to put a bunch of dots there. Then I come in with my E47 and then E44 is my lightest color. Now you've probably seen my videos before when I'm making these beachy scenes and I use the sand stamp from the Island to Visit stamp set and I just stamp out that sand stamp using chocolate ink. Well this is just a different method in case you don't have that sand stamp you can just use a bunch of dots on your cardstock. So I added that there to my scene and then just trimmed off the excess and then adding that cardstock to a piece of tangerine cardstock that I've cut down to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I'm just adding the little stamps. Now I did color off camera the tropical to stamp, which is this flower, as well as the leaves that go with that stamp set. I thought it was a perfect addition to the scene to add some tropical flowers and leaves. So I'm just adding everything there, layering them on. I add my little crab, but my little crab, I wanted to add some foam to the back just to make him pop up, just to add a little bit of dimension there to the card. I also stamped out the sentiment onto a stitched oval and added some um, tangerine ink to the edges just to add some color. And then I'm just adding that to an A2 size card base. And I'm really loving the colors in this card and how that turned out. And I want you to look carefully at that background. It's actually a very glittery, sparkly background because I use my glitter pens. And to finish up this card, I added my Nuvo Crystal Drops in Ripened Pumpkin, and that will complete this card. So moving on to my second card, I'm using the Shell Fold It. I die cut this layering piece out of Guava cardstock and then the shadow layer out of Candy. And then I'm gonna add glue to the back of the layering piece. 
And then I'm going to add that layering piece to the top of that shadow layer. Now if you wanted just to use that shell as a die cut piece, then you can just use that as a die cut piece. You don't have to make it your card base, but I'm going to make this card an actual shell shaped card base and you'll see that process a little bit later on after I get these drink stamps layered onto this card front. So you can see I'm just using some double sided tape because I wanted to layer these drinks together so I just put a little bit of tape there on the one turquoise drink and added the other one there on top and I was just trying to figure out the placement of these stamps onto this card front. So I do add some glue. I don't add glue all the way to the top of that turquoise drink because I know that it's not going to be on the card front. It's actually going to be la layered off that card. And I did wipe off some of the glue just to make sure that I didn't have any extra glue on there. So here's how you make your actual card base. So I have a piece of white cardstock which I folded in half and then I scored it really well and I'm taking that largest die in the set and I'm putting it so that the top edge is slightly over the fold in the cardstock and then running that through my die cut machine. And when that comes out of the die cut machine you get your card base so I'm just adding glue to the top of the actual card base and then laying the shell die cut piece that I decorated right on top. And there's your card. So I went ahead and stamped the sentiment right on the inside of the shell. And here I'm taking my Tombow liquid glue and just adding a little bit of glue along the bottom of the shell and some of the spots on the drinks. And then I'm sprinkling this sand glitter that I have. It's actually, um, it, it's not real sand, but it looks like real sand. And it's almost, it works almost like a glitter. And it's actually the Mud Puddles Tahiti, in case you wanted to know what that is. I purchased it up at the Scrapbook Expo one year. And I figured I had this in my stash, why not use it, because I rarely use it. And I just added that to the front, and then I'll let that dry, and it has a really nice dimension to it, and it looks like real sand. So that completes card two, and moving on to my third card. My third card, I'm using the Mermaid to Stamp stamp, and I've stamped it with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink onto some Spectrum Noir cardstock. I am coloring it up with my Copic markers, and I'm taking my darkest a red marker which is my R59 and that's what I use that's what I'm using to color her hair and I'm just adding some um, dark spots there to her hair where the shadows that I think should be so all of that R59 it's just in the shadow areas using some flicking motions to add those colors and then I go into the R29 and I just extend that R29 off of where the darker color left off, again using some flicking motions on that hair. It's important when you're doing hair to use the flicking motions so that it looks more realistic. Then I come in with my R27 and do the same thing and then come in with the R24, same thing again and then come back in with my lightest red which is the R21 which that will be the highlight color. So again, just some flicking motions. When you're doing your flicking motions, you want to use the tip of your pen and just flick from top to bottom or from bottom to top and put some straight lines in there. And then I just come in and do that same process all over again, repeating those same colors just to give it a little bit of a darker or more richer tone on her hair. And then once her hair is complete, I will move on and complete her skin. And again, all of these colors will be down in the description box so you can see what colors I use. And I do have a link down in the description box to where I purchased my Copic markers. I've purchased many of my Copic markers on Scrapbook Pal and there is an affiliate link down in the description box in case you decide to do purchase some Copic markers. I, I purchased several of my markers as well as refills from there and I feel like that their prices are better than if you just went into a Hobby Lobby because they're actually cheaper than if you just went into a Hobby Lobby or Michaels and purchased those markers individually. Okay so for her skin I first laid down E4 which was the darkest where I put some shadows down and then I moved into I believe it was E11 and then just kind of went over the dark moving on to E21 
where I went over the um, previous colors again and then just extended a little bit more down or a little bit more area. And then I bring in the E00, went over those same colors again, but notice that I'm actually pushing out towards the center of her, of her face as well as on her arms pushing out toward some of that white area so just trying to cover, get a little bit more coverage and then my lightest is the E triple zero and just going over the whole thing to fill in all of the white areas and then I take the R20 and add some rosy cheeks and then just repeat the process so again taking the E4 adding some shadows so that's my darkest color coming back in with the E11 just extending that down so coloring over the E4 and extending it down a little bit more. Coming in with the E21, again going over the previous color and extending it even further down. You can see how it actually adds more color to her skin. So same thing with the E000 or double zero. I added her rosy cheeks and then I came in and then added the E00 again just to kind of go over that which that last color it technically should have been the E000 but it's okay no big deal so here I color her tail with the G00 which is the lightest color come in with the BG75 and I'm just putting some shadows there and here I'm doing a little bit of um, outlining on those um, lines in the tail and adding my own lines as well Again, more shadows up towards the top. I come in with the G19 and just kind of extend a little bit where that darker color left off. And it's just extending that green just a little bit more, going over the darkest green and extending a little bit more. Coming in with my G16, doing the same thing. So basically, when you go from dark to light, which is what a which is what I'm doing. I put the dark down, then take the next darkest, uh, the next lightest shade, the medium shade, and just go over the dark, extend a little bit more, take the next shade, go over again, extend a little bit more, until I get all the way down to the light. And I also have another tutorial using this mermaid. It's a slimline card under the C-type card that I made. And I do go over the coloring a little bit more in depth, I think. Um, I will link that video down below. I put that video out probably towards this last summer, maybe. But I will link it in the description box in case you like the coloring of the mermaid and you want to see a little bit more you can go over to that video and take a look at that video. So here I'm just putting in some dots with some of the darker shades just to add some texture to her tail. And I do come in with my V markers for the purples. The V01 is my lightest. I also use the V17 as the darkest shade and the V12 as the midtone. I am coloring up her bow as well, which I know that was off camera. I'm sorry you couldn't see that. And then I come in with a white gel pen and I'm just adding some dots just to add some fun sparkle to her hair. I will also add those white dots to her tail. I just think it adds a little bit more texture, some more dimension, and just some more fun by using that white gel pen. So once I have her colored, I will die cut that out with the shadow layer. And I have this yellow and white polka dot paper, which I cut down to five and a quarter by four, layered that onto a piece of grape cardstock that measures five and three eighths by four and an eighth. I did die cut that shell using the grape and the pixie cardstock from the Stamps of Life. I did die cut a border using the ginger snap cardstock. I did ink it up with the ginger snap ink, and I also used the sand stamp from the Island to Visit stamp set and just inked up that sand stamp on top of that border there in some chocolate ink. And now I'm just layering my elements on my 
um, card front. So I'm just trying to figure out where to want to put the mermaid. I kind of tuck her a little bit behind the shell and then put her tail in front. I think that's cute, like she's sitting on that shell. So first I'm taking some double-sided adhesive tape and just making sure that I keep that mermaid exactly where I want her to be, just putting some tape behind her to attach her to that shell. And notice that some of the shell is kind of a little bit behind that border and some of it's in front of the border, which I think is really cute, like the shell is in the sand. I'm gonna go ahead and add that border down. I did not put some glue all the way at the top of that border just because I know I want to tuck that shell onto the inside there. And then I will add the stamp, happy birthday. I do bring in a shell from the shells to stamp set and bring in one of the crabs from the kit. Add those there to the sand and then add that to an A2 size card base. And this card does measure um, four and a quarter by five and a half. I will add some of that um, sand that I used in the previous card. Just adding some Tombow liquid glue where I want the sand to appear and then sprinkling some of that sand glitter to the top of the card. I do add some spots there on the shell as well. I think that just adds for some nice dimension and texture. And again, that sand, it works just like glitter. I will try and find a link to this store online. I'm not sure if they sell it online, but I will try and find a link. And if I find it, I will link it down in the description box. But they have all kinds of colors of this sand from blues, I think they might even have some greens. Really, really pretty. So there's my final card. Again, I will have all of the links in the description box. So if you're interested in purchasing this class kit, head on over to the Stamps of Life website and take a look at that. And if you like this video, please click that thumbs up button down below. And thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.